Hey, what's happening guys? Today we're going to talk about the difference between regular capacitors and super capacitors. So if you take a look at this guy right here, and this is just a regular capacitor. Focus. There we go. You can see this is 470 microfarad at 16 volts. And it's a, you know, let's see about a quarter of an inch, but I'm probably wrong. So let's get the, uh, get some calipers out here and we'll measure this distance. Looks like eight millimeters. Now here's the super cap. And if we measure it, you can see. They're relatively close to the same diameter. The super cap is a little larger in height, about almost twice as much as the standard cap. But, I mean, that really doesn't matter in this case. The uh, 470 microfarads versus... Come on, focus. You're not going to focus, are you? Anyway, this is uh, 3 farad at 2.7 volts. <clears throat> so, what's the difference? Well, the difference is in the way they're made. The difference is in the construction. The standard electrolytic capacitor is constructed by separating two conducting plates by a dielectric medium. The supercapacitor, on the other hand, is constructed by separating two conducting plates by a separator. Just a simple electrolytic solution. So while this has like a piece of paper kind of inside of it rolled up, separating the two plates, this has nothing but the dielectric solution. Paper and solution, solution only. Is this the only way they're made? I don't know. I doubt it. But that's the way most of them are made. Now, I have a selection of them here. Like this one we looked at is 3 farad. This honking behemoth is uh, 40 farad. So 3 farad, 40 farad. Well, so I'll get some of these. These are 5.5 volt. Basically, they're just two capacitors together. At four farad, so those are two. Now, one thing about supercapacitors is, man, do they contain a lot of energy. So generally, when I store them, if I can find a way, I find a way to store them with a uh, a resistor across the legs. Just it's just kind of it's an interference fit. It's just kind of sprung and stuck in there. The only thing that matters is that they touch. It keeps the capacitor in a discharge situation and it uh you know keeps it from shorting out and dumping a whole lot of energy almost instantaneously which is of course you know the super capacitors claim to fame all right i got out the t7 tester here i figure we'd just run it on all of these so here's our standard electrolytic 470 microfarad at 16 volt capacitor and we'll see what we get these things are generally slow at locating capacitors so 481.3 microfarad with an ESR 0.31 so not bad at all now before I put this away I just want to make sure that I discharge it Perfectly fine with these little capacitors. You don't want to do that to a super capacitor. I seriously doubt that this thing is going to read these. And these have all been discharged. None of my meters will read this much capacitance. So this is the prepared.
Well, I think that just ran out of battery, so I have to plug that guy in. The batteries in this thing are not very good. So we'll rehook up our capacitor and we'll run the test again. I'll be shocked if it shows anything really. Okay, capacitor, but 32 picofarad, yeah. So it, it doesn't know what to do. It's not even close. Just want to make sure we're not building up a... Uh, Little bit of energy there okay so let's do a little experiment here is the uh, 16 volt uh, 470 microfarad capacitor just knocking stuff everywhere I'm just going to trim the legs even so they go into a breadboard better. And I got a breadboard right here. So put these in parallel with this guy here. Like so. So we've got a yellow resistor with a 330 ohm um, resistor on the cathode leg there is our uh, capacitor in parallel now the next thing we're going to do oh, come on is we're just going to stick some wires in here also in parallel everything's in parallel So we have 2.7 volts on the power supply, which is sufficient for lighting lighting the uh, LED. Okay, everything is in place. We'll power it up. Okay, so it is putting out 0 0.002 amps at 0 0.005 watts. You can see the LED is lit there that should be enough time to charge that capacitor and if I pull the power out from it oh you can't see the LED my bad let's do this again okay so we'll charge it up here let's zoom in cinematographer I am not okay so we're putting 2.7 volts in everything here is in parallel so we're charging this capacitor at 2.7 volts and it should act as a reservoir and keep this LED lit when I remove the power. But you're going to notice it's only going to keep it lit for, you know, a second. Ready? Here we go. One, two, three. But you see how quickly it flamed out. Now watch this. If I take out the resistor and then pull the power, the LED is immediately out. What we're getting from this is a little bit of a reservoir. So that when we pull the power, once again, you can see it fades slower. All right. So let's disconnect our test bed here. And we're going to rotate over here to the power supply, which again is set for... 2.7 volts is maxed out at 5 amps. And we're going to charge one of these little 3 farad guys. I'm just going to nip the leg off so that we're even. Makes it easier to work in the breadboard. We will connect our negative like so. And our positive like so. So, making sure they are well separated. 
and when I hit this uh, button here, we should see the voltage start out very close to zero and creep its way up. Now it's charged. So if I bring this over here and plug it in, in parallel, you can see that our LED is quite brightly lit. You know, there's nothing else there. And that LED will stay lit for quite some time. And that, I guess, is the hope and the promise of supercapacitors. They are able to do things that regular capacitors and batteries alone cannot do. But they have the, uh, the best of both worlds, I guess. When we're talking about supercapacitors versus batteries, a battery has a large you know, capacity to store energy. Well, 40 farads is an insane amount of energy. But a battery can't dump all its energy quickly due to its internal resistance. The supercapacitor having an extremely low internal resistance can dump its energy almost instantaneously. Now, whereas the batteries have a more... I don't know what's it called, a linear discharge curve, although it's not really linear. It, it is linear to a point, but then there's generally a really steep drop-off. The capacitor, or the supercapacitors are more, they are more linear than a battery, I guess. I guess that's the way to say it. They will continue to output power until there's nothing left. And just to show you, that thing is still going strong. And if I grab a meter, where I have one, hang on one second, let me grab a meter. Let me zoom out here for you. So there's the meter. I'm going to pull the super cap out here. Black on the negative, red on the positive. And you can see we're still showing two volts. I mean, that is just insane. Super caps, man. They're pretty cool. So how did I charge it, and how can you charge yours? Well, it's pretty simple. The main thing that you need to be careful of in this case is not damaging the supercapacitor but in fact damaging your power supply the supercapacitor can take a great deal of power but can your power supply output that much power so let me grab another one here's the big dog this is the 40 microfarad so let's get her clipped up, or get him clipped up, her, or whatever you want to call it. We'll get him clipped up in there. Make sure our wires are nice and separated. Keep an eye here. Watch the voltage go from zero up. Charging. Still charging. I'm going to cut it off there. I don't need anything to explode. Come back over here with me. Turn them up a little bit. And I don't know if these are going to fit in here. Yeah, they won't fit in the holes. But... Should be able to get to it like this, huh? Yep. 
there she is lit and it'll stay lit for quite some time so when you're done you generally want to discharge them you don't want to short them again the ability to dump just an amazing ton of power out you know you don't want to be in the middle of that so to speak so I've got a 1 meg resistor here it's going to kind of stick it in there oh, come on don't bounce out on me now there you go yeah just something like that is it proper hell no will it work absolutely leave that on there while you go do something else that'll discharge your capacitor and take things down to safe levels so there you have it super caps versus regular caps it's a difference in construction they fulfill the same function in circuits they behave the same way in circuits so you don't have to plan anything differently if you're going to use super capacitors you simply must be aware of their capacitance and the ability for them to dump incredible amounts of energy in almost no time at all well guys that's it for today I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Hey, say anything you want. Up, down, good, bad. As long as you're interacting with the video in some way, it makes YouTube happy. And they pump my videos out to more people, which is good for everybody. So, do that. Right? Right. That's it. I'm out. Peace.